אני אלי, אני עורך דין, מתמחה בקניין מוכנים וטכנולוגיה ליגה ארנון, ובאתי לדבר על תיק, פסקי הדין של אורקול נגד גוגל, זה נראה לי מאוד מעניין וגם מאוד חשוב לקהילות קוד פתוח. אה, מאוד קשה לשמוע, אוקיי, סליחה. אז אני אתחיל שוב, אני אלי, אני עורך דין, מתמחה בקניין מוכנים וטכנולוגיה, מוסד יגאל ארנון. אני כאן לדבר על פסק הדין של אורקול, פסקי הדין של אורקול נגד גוגל, זה מאוד מעניין לדעתי וגם מאוד חשוב לקהילות קוד פתוח. ברשותכם, אני אישית הייתי מעדיף לדבר באנגלית, זה מפריע למישהו? לא? אוקיי, אז בואו, בואו, בואו נלך. So we'll start with, uh, with Java, right? The, 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 the case is about Java and Android. We'll start with Java. I'm sure most people here know all of this, but just for some background. So Java was uh, released in 1995 by Sun, right? And the idea with Java was that you would write it once and it would run on any platform. So, right, there's a platform underneath, the operating system on top, and then the Java for virtual machine that sits on top of the operating system. And you don't have to write Java for the operating system or the platform, you can write it once in code and it will run on any machine, on any platform. And that's very important for, uh, for the case, as we'll, go, we'll see. Right, so you, run it, you write the code for the virtual machine. Um, Java progressed, it developed, eventually it was released as uh, open source under the GPL in 2007 by Sun. But in 2010, Oracle purchased Sun. Um, so, and they also, bought all the, they also bought all the rights to, uh, to Java. Android started, remember we said that, that uh, the JDK was in 2007. It was released as open source in 2007 under the, G, G, under the GPL license. Android started before that in 2005. Right, so they could have switched to open JDK as it was, as it was started, but they started before that. It was hard for them, I think. So they, start, they, they didn't do that. What they did is that they basically took Java by itself under no license, well, not really under no license. They took existing, um, li the existing libraries of Java that were released under the Apache license that were developed under and by the Apache Foundation. And they took it and they said, we'll use it under the Apache license, even though the people, the, the company, Oracle and Sun, that had released Java didn't release it under Apache. They had released it under GPL. So Android, as you know, is written kind of, applications are written in, in Java, but yeah? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> so, so what? Um, Android, uh, the, the, Java, the Java implementation algorithm is based on Apache Harmony, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, the problem with Apache Harmony was not the fact that it was not based on the GPL. It's basically relevant to the Apache Harmony uh, code base. The, Apache, the, Harmony, the problem with Apache Harmony code base was developed from scratch based on the Java language open specification. That's right. So we'll get to, well, maybe we'll, we'll we'll get to it. Okay. So, but we'll talk after. Uh, so, so applications are written in Java, not really Java. It's not completely interoperable with Java. If you write something in 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 in, in, the, in Dalek, it may not work on on a standard Java uh, virtual machine, um, and it's not interoperable. So that's Java. That's Android. Can Google do that? Can Google? Could Google just take? the Java libraries, under no license, <coughs> and uh, they did. They did. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> can they do that? The question of whether they can do that. Yes. If you read the Android source code, you can you know what, certain, like, yeah. certain uh, Java methods that have the notation. We did not like this implementation, so we wrote our own. We'll get, let's talk, let's talk after. after. Well, I, I agree. Let's, okay, so intellectual property. The question of whether they can do this is a question under the law of intellectual property. There's a lot of kinds of intellectual property, right? There's trademarks, which protects brands like Java, but Google didn't use the logo of Java, right? They didn't call it Java. They called it something else because they weren't allowed to use the Java and they couldn't say that it was interoperable with Java. They weren't allowed to do that and they couldn't use the logo. There's ideas, right? Ideas are protected by patents. At the beginning of this case, um, Oracle sued uh, Google that they had infringed um, Oracle's patents on Java. They did sue them under patent infringement. Jan probably wasn't very happy about that. I object to this <laughs> thing. The whole concept of patents is not protected well, ideas. Well, it's protect like implementations of ideas. Fine. <laughs> you can't protect the idea. It's unprotectable. There's no intellectual property on ideas. 
it's a, it's a thin line. Well, well, let's, let's talk after. Let's talk after. There's trade secrets that protect secrets. Right? Java is not a secret. It's the, it, the specifications are not a secret. It's all open source now. Right? And then there's copyright, which protects expression. Right? Copyright protects expression. Code is a kind of expression. Maybe not a novel, but it's a kind of expression. So copyright protects it. But the problem with copyright is that the value of software is not in the expression. People don't buy software because it's written beautifully or it's documented so nicely. They buy it because it works and it does something. So copyright is a problem in protecting software because what it protects is not what's valuable about the software. And we'll see that in this case. So what happened? What happened in this case, just to get a little bit deeper, this is, this is a stack of Android, the Android stack, right? At the bottom, there's Linux, there's GPL, there's some libraries on top, there's the applications that developers write on top. Over here, there's the Android runtime, the Java Dalvik runtime. That's what Google took. They didn't take all of it. They only took the API, the API parts of it, that part, the interface with the applications on top. What does that mean, that they took the API? Just to talk about it for a second, and maybe that'll help us understand. Here is right, a function in Java, the J Java <coughs> Max. So it takes the maximum of two numbers, a simple function. And here's the OpenJDK implementation of that, of that function in JDK, which is licensed by Oracle under the GPL license. Right? Here's the implementation. Um, top line is the header, and then how it works. Here's the Android implementation. It looks completely different, right? We put them side by side. Completely different. So what did they copy? What did Google take? They copied only, only the header functions. They wrote all the implementation from the beginning, not, not from the beginning because they had used the Apache Harmony libraries that were under the Apache licenses, but they wrote the implementation basically from scratch. And all they took was the, was the header, the declaring code at the beginning, right? So two numbers go in, one number comes out, has these characteristics, that's all they took. This, of course, is only one function in that uh, library, which is only, again, right, you're moving up, uh, up, up the organization of Java, that's only one uh, library in, in, in the class of math, which is only one in the library, one class in the library of Lang, Java Lang. So, so they had basically taken the header functions of all 37 of these, all the classes and all the functions in all these libraries. So a lot of header functions, thousands of lines, I think something like 9,000 lines of code they copied. But again, only the header functions. If you look at it, if we go back for a section, for a second, they only copied the header lines, the whole implementation, none of that, they didn't copy any part of that. You say 9,000 means 9,000 function iterations. No, I think, I think 9,000 functions because and a header line for each function. Yeah, 9,000 yeah. function iterations. I think, I think it's 9,000. So, so. This is only 3%. 3% of all the code in Java. Not a lot, right? Not a lot, 3%. Not a lot, but they also copied, aside from the number, they also copied what's called, in legal language, the structure, the sequence, so a whole organization, right? So these are the functions, they go into this, which goes the whole, the whole hierarchy of, of Java, which is important for, for writing programs in Java. So they copied the header functions and the structure. And again, this is a question, because if you look at the header functions, they don't really look like, like great novels. They, does copyright protect just a header function? Two things come in. One thing comes out. Do they protect the organization of all of this? Isn't this like uh, copying the address of the, of the company or, or something? An address cannot be copyrighted. So this thing is functional. So, so, so this, exactly, this is part of the question. Aside from this, which is functional, but it has some, some expression, they also copied the whole structure. Is the structure an expression, the whole structure of Java. Right? By copying the structure of Java, they, they, well, let's, let's the expression here is, the, is the, about the blanks and tabs. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so they all copied the whole hierarchy. Is the whole hierarchy uh, uh, an expression? You know, there's no good answers to this question. There, there really aren't. But they sued Google, Oracle sued Google. They went to court. Something has to happen, right? They sued them. Oh, so one second, before we go there. Um, before we get to the court case, Google didn't have to take it for free, basically under the Apache license. There were things they could have done not taking it for free, basically. They could have taken it under the OpenJDK, which was GPL. But they didn't want to do that, first of all, because 
Um, OpenJDK was released a little later, would have had some engineering changes. And also, once you release things under the GPL and people start thinking about it, is it, what do I have to do? Do I have to release code? There are obligations. They didn't want people to think about it. It was very important for Google for people to just come in, write, langu write programs, write applications for, for Android off the bat and not have to think about it. So that's why they choose, chose Java because people were very familiar with Java. And that's also why they chose something that didn't have a GPL license because they didn't want people to think about that. So that option wasn't on the table. They could have paid money. They could have bought a commercial license. Um, but then they'd have to pay and they didn't want to pay. And there were long negotiations about whether they would pay, how much they would pay, and they just didn't want to pay enough, so they didn't buy the license. And they could have taken what uh, Google, what Oracle called a specification license. And specification license meant that Oracle would let you get, and that's what you were talking about before, that the Oracle would give you the license to the headers of all the, of all of the, of all of the Java libraries. And then you could use it and write your own implementation. And maybe Apache did it, maybe it didn't. It wasn't clear. But, <coughs> but, but Google didn't want that license. They didn't want that license. Why? Because under the specification license, you couldn't, one of the requirements was that you couldn't subset or superset mm -hmm. the library. You couldn't make it bigger. You couldn't make it smaller. You had to use these exact specifications. And why? Yeah? There was another problem. The Java specification license was to implement fully compatible and testable That's right. implementation. Yeah. So after implementing the version, if you want to deploy it, they also have to pass the test suite, That's which costs $100,000 per run. Oh, okay. I don't know about the money. But, but anyways, they, aside from the money, they didn't want to do it because they wanted to improve it. They, they, wanted, they wanted to improve uh, the language and make it run on, on mobile mobile devices, they wanted to make it a lot better for, for, for this implementation. They didn't really want to use Java, they wanted to build on Java. They took a specification license. But why was it important for Java, not for people, not to, for, for Oracle, that people not change the headers of Java? It was important for them because the whole idea was Java, of Java was that if you would write it one time, you could run it on any platform. And this was also important for Google, that you would write the implementation one time, you'd write it for Android, and Android could run on any number of hardware devices. But there is some conflict here because Google didn't want to use the same implementation that Oracle had because they didn't think it was so good. They wanted to improve it. So this, this, this whole conflict um, went eventually into court where Oracle sued Google for $9 billion, a lot of money, for using the headers and the organization of Java. Um, so well, without going into too much legal stuff, we'll just run through the cases quickly. So the district court, the bottom court, first court, said this method specification is an idea. You can't copyright an idea. It's all functional. Give me a break. That's not what we're here for. It, there's no copyright at all here. So Oracle, you can't sue Google for copying the headers. Obviously, Oracle had built a whole business about people paying money for the headers. They didn't like that. So they appealed it. It went up to uh, the appeals court, where the appeals court took exactly the opposite position. And they said, no, this is all expression, it's all protected by copyright. Had Google wanted to, they could have written their own header code. Of course, they couldn't do it because they wanted to use Java. They could have written their own header code. And therefore, the way that Oracle wrote it is expression. And therefore, when Google copied it, it was copying someone's copyright. And they can't do that. They can't do that. They also copied the whole organization. And the court also said that that was also protected by copyright. So, <coughs> so this is protected by copyright. Oracle. Google, you may have to pay Oracle $9 billion, we'll see. So that's what the appeals court said. After that, it went up to the Supreme Court. Oracle, uh, uh, Google appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court doesn't have to listen to every case that, it, that, it, that comes to it. So the Supreme Court said, uh, of the, United, the Supreme Court of the United States, it said, we're not, this isn't important enough for us yet. We don't want to listen to the appeal. You guys keep on arguing in court for a while. Maybe we'll listen to it later. But you know, that sounds like a, 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 an opinion without any content. But um, there, is, there was very, some very interesting uh, uh, ramifications that because when they appealed to the Supreme Court, the, the Justice Department of the United States and the, right, the Solicitor General of the United States, they, had to, they, they asked for their opinion. The Supreme Court asked for their opinion of, of this case. And uh, the Justice Department was very much on the side of Oracle. They said, this is expression. This is copyrightable. And so that's the opinion of the United States government, that this is copyrightable. Anyways, that was also the opinion of the appeals court, so that's where we are right now, that it is copyrightable. These header lines are copyrightable. So then we go down back to the district court, go all the way back down. It is covered by copyright. These, the, these header lines are covered by copyright, but does that mean that Google can't use them? No. 
we have to think about it. There's what's called fair use, right? Um, fair use means that it's covered by copyright, but I can use it. This, this picture here, I just took off the internet. I didn't ask anyone for permission. I'm assuming that it's covered by fair use. I'm not, pay, I'm not, I'm not selling it, I'm not, I'm not marketing it. It's just here on my presentation here, so I can use it. How, how, do we, uh, how do we decide whether something's fair use? So in the United States, as the same in Israel, they're really very similar. You have to think about four things. The nature of the use, whether it's commercial or not. So obviously you think, is Android commercial? It's not so clear, right? Because it's open source, they're giving it away for free. Is it commercial? I don't know. The nature of the, co what are they copying? They're copying header lines. Is that, you know, is that covered by copyright? Maybe, it is a little, but who, who really? But is it really strong copyright? <coughs> then the amount of the copying, how much copying are they doing? This is also a question, right? We said they're copying 3% of all the libraries, but on the other hand, they're copying all of the APIs. So it, what, 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 what does that happen? What happens there? And then the effect on the market. The effect on the market here was also an argument because Java said, we wanted to build uh, Java for smartphones. You, Google, went into smartphones. You built uh, Android for smartphones. We couldn't do that anymore. No one wanted to buy Java from us. And Google said, uh, you weren't doing a very good job going into smartphones 10 years ago, so it didn't really affect your market. Anyways, these were the questions. Um, the people that decide this question are the jury. Right? The juries don't have to give an explanation. They just tell you what they think. So they decided it was fair use. Why? Uh, we don't know. Um, and now it's going up to the appeals court, which is, this is probably the most interesting part of the case. They don't, there's no opinion yet. But uh, the appeals court does have to give you an explanation of what they think, if they think it's fair use or not. So we'll find out uh, whether it's fair use. So um, here, what does all of this have to do with open source, really? So first of all, Android is open source. And this all affects the future of Android. In a deeper sense, though, right, there's the, there's the, the, the tension between the use of the open JDK under the GPL license and the use of the Android, the Apache Harmony license, uh, libraries under the Apache license. And if we're looking at the case right now, it seems that uh, basically Apache won. The Apache license is won. The, the case, they, they can keep on using the Apache licenses because it's fair use. That's not really true. Because in, in January, right, Google decided that it was moving to OpenJDK under the GPL. So Google right now has, is winning the case, but in, they're moving to OpenJDK, which is under the GPL licenses. So why are they doing this? No one's told me. But, but um, you know, one option is that they think that the, and what seems to be correct is, first, first of all, you know, under the open JDK, they can use it under the GPL license. There's no problem. Um, Oracle can't sue them. They can sue them for what happened in the past, but not what's happening in the future. But in a deeper sense, right, the, the, the community of open JDK has become much stronger over the years, while you know, the community of what and uh, what Google's doing has perhaps not become as strong. Maybe because the open JDK is under a GPL license, as Jan pointed out, and that perhaps results in stronger communities, while the Android license, Android community is really forked under many different redistributors, so perhaps it's become less strong. Anyways, Google moved to the open JDK, much more updated. So there's a technical reason why they did that, because it's uh, perhaps uh, better technically, but also that reflects on the licenses that the two projects use and the two communities resulting from those licenses, right? There's also some other issues here, right? Suddenly, there's a lot more GPL code in Android. All of the Java is suddenly GPL. And who owns that GPL code? Not, G not Google, Google doesn't own it. It's all owned by Oracle. Oracle likes to sue people, as you see in this case. Google doesn't like to sue people that much. Um, what does this mean for all the people that are redistributing Android, like Samsung and HTC, and all these people that are redistributing smartphones. Is Oracle going to sue them if they don't comply with the GPL? So the move to JD, open JDK may not affect Android that much itself, may not affect Google that much, but it may affect the downstream, the downstream uh, distributors of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of Android. Um, some more consequences is what, what, what's the effect of this case for the GPL? You know, what we, what we, where we are right now is that Basically, Google took this big chunk of code for free, didn't comply with any obligations, didn't comply with the GPL, and yet, it's fair use, and it's okay. Does that mean that no one has to comply with the GPL? That's what Oracle is saying right now. They're saying, um, their, their lawyers uh, wrote a long article about this, and they said, 
what if this is fair use, that means no one ever has to comply with an open source license, we will just always say it's fair use. I don't know what to answer to that. It's a, it's a, it's a legitimate question. Um, and then another question, another consequences are APIs. So there are a lot of APIs that are open source that implement proprietary APIs, like Wine implements the Windows APIs. Um, there are some open, I don't know if there's open source um, implementations of, of the Amazon APIs for cloud. There are, there are, yeah? So there are. Can they do this? There are also people, even not open source, just people that copy Amazon APIs because it's better, like Rackspace copies it. So can they do that under this? Oh, really? Okay. But again, it's the same question. Can they do that? Um, I don't know. So these are all questions. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Expression. Google didn't really didn't really use the expression. They didn't use the the um, headers as text. They what they used was some implementation in hardware that implements this uh, header, but this header is not there. So the, the market value of this code as an expression is zero, and the usage of this uh, uh, code. Uh, was not done, it, 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 it doesn't exist. It, it doesn't have a functional... Uh, but it's in, it's, in the, it's in the software implementations of Android, right? So when Google distributes... Um, no, no, it was compiled into some code and embedded in some uh, hardware. Oh. And the header is not there. It so you're, t you're, you're talking about, you're, what you're talking about is that when I buy a phone, yes. it's been compiled and it's in the hardware somewhere. Yes. But that's and not what Google does. That's, a, that's what Samsung does, right? When they put the, the Android yeah, on... This is what... Both computers do. No, that's that's true. But who does it? Samsung does it. When, what Google it doesn't does. Doesn't matter. If you yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because Google is, is Google is, is the infringing is the infringing entity. They provided source code of Java to Samsung in software form. Yeah. So this is m might be uh, something that you might sue over. But the, the user does not really get the thing. That I know. It's, it's, it's not just the users. It's the developers. Yeah. The users have less money than Google. Yeah. What happens if Google loses this fight? If Google loses the fight, um, then they pay a lot of money to Oracle. Mm, I mean, to the Android community. Ah, for the Android community? Yeah. Because right yeah, now, they have to switch their programming. Right? They did. No, they switched it. They switched it to OpenJDK. They switched it already. And OpenJDK is provided by Oracle under the GPL. Um, so probably it w w just. So just to clarify, it's not OpenJDK is not really GPL. Some parts of it are JPL, but a lot of it has an exception to it, which will allow um, developers to write applications not caring about the GPL at all. So probably there's probably no effect on developers that it's moving to OpenJDK, but it will affect. It could affect, like the companies that distribute um, 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 Android and want to customize it for their own purposes, but probably won't affect developers at all. Much as Google is working, it's not the same. Uh, our open source uh, uh, is uh, possible in the world. Uh, it's uh, debatable. A general summary? <laughs> <laughs> is there any news? I don't know. Um, um, I think I think that. The general status is that, you know, there aren't a lot of cases about this. There aren't a lot of cases, and the reason that there aren't a lot of cases is, is has a lot to do with, um, first of all, the nature of the enforcement that 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 the communities and the copyright holders have until now tended to, you know, not really sue but ask more for for compliance with the license. So that's one reason why there hasn't been so much enforcement. But lately, there's been uh, there have been some cases in the United States about this. Um, the Free Software Foundation says that when they ask people to comply, at the end people comply because they're scared of being sued. So I think people think that it is enforceable. Um, yeah, there's the VMware case, but there's no decision yet. What's interesting now is that there seems to be some people that hold copyrights in the Linux kernel, which are threatening to sue, um, and they seem to be trolling for, for, for money, not really asking for compliance, but asking for money. And in Germany also, and that seems to uh, people seem to be scared of that. So 
So I think the general impression that people have is that it's, it's enforceable. I don't really have a good answer other than my general I impression. That's the oral code. What? The oral code, suing people for infringing the GPL. That's nice. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, not here. Here they didn't sue them for infringing the GPL. Yeah, the, 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 the opinion piece that the oral lawyer wrote in our technical was all about we enforced the GPL and the court rejected that the GPL too. And obviously, it's not the case. They did not sue about GPL infringement. That's true. They didn't. They didn't sue about GPL infringement. How, how much time do I? Have? How much time? Five minutes. Okay. When three, four minutes. No, three, four minutes. Okay. So um, here they didn't sue about GPL infringement, but it's it's a similar, you know, it, because what basically what what the Oracle lawyer is saying is that I could have used it under GPL, that Google could have used it under GPL, and they. Had they done that, then they would have had to, you know, release it under GPL with all of those obligations. They didn't do that. Does that mean that no one has to comply with the GPL? That, that's basically the argument. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not the best argument in the world. I could have chosen uh, <laughs> uh, LibreOffice under the GPL, but instead I went uh, chose OpenOffice under Apache license, and I uh, hacked the hell out of it and released my own product. That means I violated the GPL. That's basically yeah. the argument. I, I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not my argument, it's, it's their argument. But I agree. Yeah. Any? The ZFS yeah. Okay. Done. Done. Thank you. Done. 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 Done.